This flashy, multicolored fly definitely lives up to its name. The Rainbow Warrior. Designed by Fly Fishing Team USA member Lance Egan, this pattern is definitely one of our favorites here at VFC. Now Lance will be the first to tell you that he doesn't really know why fish like to take this fly because it doesn't really imitate anything in particular. But it does seem to work well on waterways with scuds, sow bugs, and midges. To tie this pattern, you'll need a scud pupa emerger hook and brass bead. Today, I'm using a size 16 hook and a 332nd inch bead in silver. Some 6 aught tying thread in red, a few pheasant tail fibers, some large pearl tinsel, and some light rainbow scud dubbing. All right, gather up your materials. Let's get tying. All right, so the first thing we got to do is get the bead on the hook. Because the hook and the bead are a little bit smaller for this fly, I found that it's easier to just grab the bead with a pair of tweezers and then slide it onto the hook. And if you're new to tying, remember that the smaller opening goes in front. Now we're going to secure our hook and bead in the vise, and then we're going to attach some thread using a jam knot. This is done by wrapping a few times forward and then wrapping the thread back over itself a few more times. Then grab your good tying scissors and we're gonna snip off that extra thread. Now that that thread's not going anywhere, we're going to lay down a nice even thread base all the way back to about halfway down the bend of the hook. Now we're gonna grab our pheasant tail, pluck off a few fibers, trim the curlies with our tying scissors, these are going to form our Rainbow Warrior's tail. To attach the pheasant tail fibers, we're going to use one loose wrap to get it on there, and then a few more wraps to secure it to the hook. And now we're going to work the thread all the way back to where our thread base ends. And for this fly, I like to keep the tail a little bit smaller than say your standard mayfly nymph maybe about half a hook shank in length. Now we're going to wrap all the way back up the hook, locking this pheasant tail into place. Then we'll grab our scissors and snip the excess free. Now it's time to add our tinsel. Grab your spool and snip off about three inches. Now just like the pheasant tail, we're going to do a big loose wrap to set it into position and then slowly slide the tinsel to just behind the bead. All right, now we're gonna lock in this tinsel and wrap all the way back to our tail, all the way back to that thread base. And then we're gonna work our way back up to the front one more time. Because I wanna use the rotary function on my vise, I'm going to do a one turn whip finish to lock that thread into place. Now we're gonna swing around the bobbin cradle and hang up our thread. Using the rotary function on my vise, I'm gonna grab that tinsel and work it all the way up the entire fly. If you don't have a vise with rotary function, no worries. You can just do this part by hand. As we work our way up the fly, we're going to slightly overlap the previous wrap. This is going to create some segmentation on your Rainbow Warrior's body. Just like you might see on a caddis or midge larva. Now that we've reached the top, we're gonna take our bobbin off the bobbin cradle and hold that tinsel in our right hand. We're gonna take the bobbin and the thread in our left hand and go up and over a few times. This is going to lock that tinsel into place. Now grab that tinsel and fold it back. We're gonna lock it into place even more and create a nice smooth thorax. This is where we will wrap our dubbing.
Now that we've got a nice thread base, we're going to create a one inch dubbing noodle. Now a little tip on this fly, less is more with the dubbing. It's really easy to go overboard on the dubbing with such a small fly. So start with a little bit and add more as needed. A little side note for any beginners, when you're forming a dubbing noodle, only twist in one direction. If you twist both ways, your dubbing is never going to attach to that thread and you're gonna get quite frustrated. Now let's create our dubbing thorax. All right, now that we have our dubbing thorax, we're going to create a little wing case with our tinsel by folding it back over the top of the dubbing. And just like we did before, we're going to hold that tinsel in our right hand and go up and over with our left hand, locking that tinsel into place. Then we'll give it a few firm wraps and snip off the tinsel. Now we're gonna give it a three to five turn whip finish. Then snip off the thread. So this fly looks great as it is. And if you're going for a slimmer profile, this is probably the way to go. But sometimes I like my Rainbow Warriors to be a little buggier. So I'll grab my Velcro brush and I'll tease out some of those dubbing fibers. And then I'll grab my tying scissors and trim it to my liking. And there you have it, the Rainbow Warrior. If you found this video helpful and easy to follow along, we're putting together an entire library of tying tutorials, which you can find right here. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and live real life.